Welcome to this first worship service of the new year. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. I am blessed to be your pastor. I'm Barbara Aziz. And as we gather today during this Epiphany Sunday, we remember the light of Christ that shines in and through each one of us. So join with me in prayer as we light our Christ candle. Let us pray. Loving God, thank you so much for bringing us together. And we pray, Lord, that your light may continue to shine in and through us, no matter what is happening. And we thank you for the start of this new year. May it be one that continues to be filled with your light, your hope, your love, your joy, and your peace. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Christmas 
messengers, the great glad tidings tell. Oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. My friends, please join me as together we affirm our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. Shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Now all around the neighborhood, all around the neighborhood, I'm gonna let it shine. All around the neighborhood, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine. My whole gang is here to tell you Happy New Year today. This is Poe. Say hi, Poe. So, I have an important message to talk to you about today for children's time. Have you heard people say, whew, thank goodness it's 2021? I've seen it all over Facebook, and I've heard people say it. Um, so, yes. 2020 had its challenges for all of us, and it brought some heartache to many. However, I want you to pause for a moment and think about all of the blessings that God gave you in the year 2020, because they were there. Let me give you some examples. As a church, we still had an amazing vacation Bible school, and it was completely family-run ministry. Pretty neat. Another thing is that some of you did school from extraordinary places like a travel trailer or a campsite or even just at home. You should be super proud of yourself because you are so capable. A personal blessing for me from 2020 is looking back, I am so thankful for the extra time that I got to spend with my family because I'll never get those years of the, their lives back and watching them grow up and learn new things. So I know your parents can agree with me there. So for children's time today, I want you to type below all of the blessings you can think of from the year 2020. And let's make 2021 just as great where we realize and look for blessings every single day. Amen. Oh Christ, be the center of our lives. Be the place we fix our eyes. Be the center of our lives. You're the center of the universe. Everything's made Jesus, breath of every living thing, everyone was made for you. You hold everything together, you hold everything together. Oh Christ, be the center of our lives. We fix our eyes, be the center of our lives. We 
lift our eyes to heaven and we wrap our lives around your life we lift our eyes to heaven to you oh christ i the center of our life this place we fix our eyes to center of our lives. We lift our eyes to heaven. We wrap our lives around your life. We lift our eyes to heaven. To you. Friends, let us pray. Loving God, thank you so much for your word already so beautifully displayed through this service. And now as we explore your holy word, let these be more than words on paper, but truly transform our hearts and lives as you've intended scripture to be and do for us. And in these moments, Lord, help us to discover ways to let our light shine so that you may always be glorified. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Friends, I invite you on this Epiphany Sunday to hear these words from Isaiah 60, verses 1 through 6. Arise, shine. Your light has come. The Lord's glory has shone upon you. Though darkness covers the earth and gloom the nations, the Lord will shine upon you. God's glory will appear over you. Nations will come to your light and kings to your dawning radiance. Lift up your eyes and look all around. They are all gathered. They have come to you. Your sons will come from far away and your daughters on caregivers' hips. Then you will see and be radiant. Your heart will tremble tremble and open wide because the sea's abundance will be turned over to you the nation's wealth will come to you countless camels will cover your land young camels from Midian and Ephah they all will come from Sheba carrying gold and incense proclaiming the Lord's praises this is the word of God for the people of God thanks be to God my friends I shared with you on Christmas Eve the blessing and yet the wounding that surrounds uh, my Christmases ever since my dad died on Christmas Eve on 12 years ago. You know, as a pastor at the time, I wondered how on earth I would ever make it through another candlelight Christmas Eve service since my dad's favorite song was Silent Night. He died while I was serving the good people in Bishop, Texas, and they helped me so much but then in May the next year, I moved to a new church in Kyle. And as Christmas came closer at my new church, the pit in my stomach grew. And it really felt like darkness was just taking over. And so I did some grief work. You know, I got some help. But the day still came. <laughs> and Christmas Eve, it was time to light the candles and to sing Silent Night. And as I walked with my light from the Christ candle, there was a child named Katie on the front row reaching her unlit candle out to me and lighting her candle, watching the excitement and the awe in her eyes. It brightened every fiber of my being. And I knew that Jesus was taking care of my heart. The second and third Christmases at Kyle, it was the same Thing. Katie was there on the front row. I started to wonder if her mom knew about this because I hadn't shared it with anyone that I remembered. And as I told her how Katie was blessing me, how God was using them, she started crying. The mom did. She had no idea, but she said she always felt compelled to sit on the front row for Christmas Eve. The funny thing is, as the fourth year came, I got an urgent phone call that afternoon from Katie's mom that said they might be late, but that they're coming. And no matter what I did to try to talk them out of coming to church, 
who, who knew she actually said no we will be there and there was Katie you know I served then in Bulverde for six years and now in Bracken and God has never let me down it feels like God's grace just breaks open doesn't it and pours all over us in those moments my friends the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not nor ever will overcome it ever that's what this epiphany season is all about it's about God's light in the middle of our darkest times and it's about us sharing that light that we know to be true for our lives you know when this passage was being written in Isaiah the Israelites were going through a period of darkness and blessing too, both blessing and wounds they had been in exile for a period of around 70 years 70 years prior to this they were forcibly removed from their homes and forced to live in a foreign land many died during the exile and so now 70 years later there's this new generation of some of the people coming back out of exile and what may sound like a joyous occasion was actually a time covered in darkness and anxiety and unknown because upon their return they would have found the temple in ruins their very way of worshiping God and not only that if they were blessed to find their family home intact more than likely someone else was already living in it can you imagine if that were you and so Isaiah speaks words of hope for them and for us too who finds ourselves down and anxious and fearful he says arise shine for your light has come look up your eyes and look about you you will look and be radiant your heart will throb and swell with joy and then this funny promise herds of camels will cover your land but that actually was a, a blessing of wealth a promise of wealth my friends the light of God shines even when darkness covers the earth do you know this the light always shines the light is always stronger than we even know the light shines when we sit on the front row with our children the light shines when we tell someone God bless you the light shines when we make extra food and take it to our neighbors and leave it on their porch right the light shines when we give abundantly out of our wealth so that families Christmases can be wonderful and even better than the year before the light shines every time we put God and others first and then ourselves. The light shines in and through all of us. You know, the, in Matthew 2, as we celebrate Epiphany, we remember the Magi who followed a star, a bright light, to find the Christ child, the Messiah. And just like the Israelites who find the light in a dark place, it's the same in Matthew. Now we have our beautiful cleaned up manger scene behind us of Christmas. And, and the three magi are there who've come from the east to come and see Jesus. It's a beautiful manger scene. Every scene needs the three kings, right? But scripturally, I will tell you, we don't know how many magi there were. There were just three gifts. They were astronomers who read stars, planets for a living. So we know that the star that appeared must have been an anomaly. Now we don't know how they connected this light in the sky with the birth of Christ, except they would have known very well some of the Old Testament scrolls of the prophets. But before they see the light, before they see Jesus, they encounter darkness. They go and they find Herod, who was threatened by Jesus. Herod felt like he was the king of the Jews. So he bold faced lies to the Magi and he says, go and search carefully for the child. And as soon as you find him, report to me so that I may go and worship him as well. And that was not his intention. So they left, and the star led the way. And, quote, when they saw the star that had stopped over the place where the child was, they were overjoyed. 
And on coming to the house, they were in a house by then, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and they worshipped him. They worshipped the very light himself. And they were warned, too, in a dream by God to not return to Herod. And at that, Herod ordered the murder of all male babies under the age of two in an effort to catch up, to catch Jesus up in this sweep of killings. It's horrible. It's darkness. Joseph and Mary took Jesus out of Bethlehem for his safety, and they, like the Israelites, lived in exile. They, in Egypt until it was safe to return. Friends, it's said that the gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh was what allowed the family to escape because the cost of keeping children safe is high. But do you see how God provided light in the midst of darkness? This is the season of epiphany that we find ourselves in. The light shines in and through all of us. And guess what? The light shines in and through in spite of us, too. The light is about God and not about us. Lutheran pastor and author Nadia Boltzweber speaks of her response when someone asked what she does to personally grow closer to God, and her response was instead of what God does for her. She says, My spirituality is most active. In the moments when I realize God may have gotten something beautiful done through me, despite me. And when I am confronted by the mercy of the gospel so much that I cannot hate my enemies. And when I am unable to judge the sin of someone else because my own stuff is too much in the way. And when I have to bear witness to another human being's suffering despite my desire to be left alone. She continues, My spirituality is most active in those moments when I am forgiven by someone even though I don't deserve it, but they are gripped by the gospel too. And when traumatic things happen in the world and I have no place to go or how to make sense of them, but what I do have is a group of people who will gather with me every week and mourn with me, and pray for me. Friends, do you see these are moments when light breaks through in the darkness and we are surprised by God. When grace breaks open and pours in and through and out of us, these are epiphany moments. The light is already here in our midst. How are we surprised by God? My friends, every single Christmas Eve, I'm so surprised by God. But I will tell you, even if a child does not end up in my line of sight, I will still be surprised by God. Somehow, some way, someone led you to be sitting here in the service, listening to me babble on about the Magi and a baby and the promise of light. Who was that person for you? Who was it that brought you the saving light of Jesus Christ, our Messiah? And how can you be that light for someone else? There's a poem I'm going to close with that was written during World War II. It's found on a cellar wall in the Cologne concentration camp. It was written by an anonymous Jewish prisoner. I believe in the sun, even when it is not shining. And I believe in love, even when there's no one there. And I believe in God, even when he is silent. I believe through any trial, there is always a way. But sometimes in this suffering and hopeless despair, my heart cries for shelter, to know someone's there. But a voice rises within me saying, hold on, my child, and I will give you strength. I will give you hope. Just stay a little while. I believe in the sun, even when it is not shining. And I believe in love, even when there's no one there. But I believe in God, even when he is silent. I believe believe through any trial, there is always a way. 
May today there be sunshine. May today there be happiness. May today there be love. May there someday be peace. Let us pray. Loving God, show us ways to be your light, to be your sunshine and happiness and love and peace for others. Lord, we thank you and we love you especially for your Son, our light, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now as we move to the communion table, I hope that you have some elements at home. My friends, let us pray. Lift up your hearts and give thanks to God. Loving God, blessed are you, who with your word and Holy Spirit created all things and called them good. In Jesus Christ, your word became flesh and dwelt among us. Through Jesus' suffering and death, you took upon yourself our sin and death and destroyed their power forever. You raised from the dead this same Jesus who now reigns with you in glory and poured upon us your Holy Spirit in your light, making us the people of your new covenant. And so on the night before he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread. And after giving thanks to you, he broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples. And he said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper was over, he took the cup. And again, after giving thanks to you, O God, He gave the cup to his disciples, and he said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the cup of my new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we do offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. So pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered, O Lord, and on these gifts, that in the breaking of this bread and the drinking of this juice, we may know the presence of the living Christ and be renewed as the body of Christ for the world, redeemed by Christ's blood until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at your table forever. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. My friends, this is the body of Christ given for you. And the blood of Christ shed for you. Now is the time for you to take for yourself or to share with your family and remember the love of Christ and the light of Christ for your hearts. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give thanks to you for this holy mystery 
in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your Spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We three kings of Orient are Bearing gifts we traverse afar Field and fountain, moor and mountain Following yonder star Oh, star of wonder, star of light Star with royal beauty bright Westward leading, still proceeding Guide us to thy perfect light Born a king on Bethlehem's plain Gold I bring to crown him again King forever ceasing never over us all to reign. Frankincense to offer have I, incense owns its deity nigh. Prayer and praising voices raising, worshiping God on high. Glorious now, behold him arise. King and God and sacrifice. Alleluia, alleluia, sounds through the earth and skies. Oh, star of wonder, star of light, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading still proceeding guide us to thy perfect light my friends as you continue about your day may you let your light shine in the name of god the father god the son and god the holy spirit amen securely fold you. God be with you till we meet again. Till we meet, till we meet, till we meet at Jesus' feet. Till we meet, till we meet, God be with you till we skies of Bethlehem appeared a star while angels sang to lowly shepherds three wise men seeking truth traveled from afar hoping to find a child from heaven falling on their knees Bowed before the humble Prince of Peace I bring an offering of worship to my King No one on earth deserves the praises that I sing Jesus, may you receive the honor that you're due No 
Thank you. 